I believe this is your week six opponent. How many people believe the Dolphins are a contending team to play in the AFC Championship this year? How many people believe this? Some facts I didn't understand and didn't know and realize about the Miami Dolphins this year. It's a pretty good looking roster here. How many people believe that this team can make it to an, a- an AFC Championship game? If Tua could stay off the stretcher, then yes. That's pretty much the um, the signature line in this comment. If two was healthy, how about this? I think the Dolphins have a better roster than the Jets. Okay, here's my here's my take on this. And and hey, and for the record, Eagles versus the uh, Dolphins and roster. Before I give you my closing take on the Dolphins, I would say this to you: Eagles are better. The quarterback's better. The coach is more involved in the play calling, so he's a, he's a play calling head coach, which means what? He's really not engaged on the defensive side. And would we not say that the structure of the Dolphins is set up the same way? Hey, hey, Tone, is is uh, McDaniel? Is that the guy? Did, did he come from the Rams? Did he come from the Rams, or is that the guy in Minnesota that came from the Rams? Um. But the Dolphins are set up exactly like the Rams are right now. You got a play calling head coach. He's he's completely focused on that side of the ball. McDaniel came from the Niners, but I'll be honest, Sills, I'm nervous about those Dolphins receivers. They're outstanding. You're 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 dead on. Okay. I like the head coach. And I'm gonna make a comment here that's probably not gonna be favorable, but Mike McDaniel was a great up to Brian Flores. And I don't mean that in any disrespect to Brian Flores because he completely changed the culture around in Miami. But very seldom do you get like a first-year coach that is going to be a guy who can improve it even more. Now, to be fair to Flores, he had less talent, less talented coaches around him, and he had a lot more to dig out from than what McDaniel was doing. So – Brian Flores had a tougher putt, a longer putt than what McDaniel had to get this football team um, in the right direction. I think the Dolphins season was, um, it was a complete reflection. It was a complete reflection of the quarterback situation that they had there this past year. McDaniels almost beat the Bills in the wild card with a third string quarterback. He's a heck of a coach. I think, but again, I think Brian Flores is a heck of a coach. And I hope he gets another opportunity to be a head football coach. Um, Frank Smith will kind of be like the pseudo OC um, there in Miami, but everyone knows Mike McDaniel is the play caller. Did you know that Vic Fangio is now the highest paid position coach in the National Football League? Actually, excuse me, I'll take that back. Uh, Vic Fangio is the highest paid defensive coordinator in National Football League. They had to basically overpay him. For him, you know, you know, Fangio says that one of the reasons why he didn't go to Philadelphia was because of that whole Gannon thing. It was also over salary because the Dolphins made him the highest paid DC in the National Football League. Okay, so he's the highest paid D coordinator. So it's a half truth. He probably didn't like the way the whole thing was handled. There was some probably some bad blood there at the end in how it was handled. They probably promised him the job. And Gannon was probably waffling back and forth. They never gave Vic Fangio a heads up. Something to that context. I don't know. But obviously, there was a scenario where the Dolphins had to go in and overpay. So the Miami Dolphins and Stephen Ross made Vic Fangio the highest paid defensive coordinator in the National Football League. Um, Not that the defense was bad last year. The defense did some good things last year. They were good. They got after the quarterback. They Their corners are good, and now with Ramsey back there, they've got some playmakers on that side of the ball. The Dolphins are an interesting team. They really are. And with Fangio now being brought in, there's going to be complex defensive scenarios where you're going to see multi-coverages, Banjo, cover two, umbrella. You're going to see multi-stuff coming out of him. And you're probably going to get a little bit more aggressive when it comes to doing stunts, especially off the perimeter. But here, follow me here. Here's, here's the Dolphins season a year ago. 
And by the way, this is the Eagles' week six opponent. So you start out with three wins, then three straight losses. Five straight wins, then five straight losses. This nine and eight season they had was a complete microcosm of how the quarterback situation played itself out this past year. Um, they got no consistency in who was going to be the starter. Teddy Bridgewater, I think, didn't they move off of him? And they got the guy, Mike White, from the Jets, right? He's now the backup quarterback now in Miami. Bridgewater's no longer the guy. I thought Teddy did a pretty good job for them when he came in in substitution. And I thought Bridgewater did a pretty good job. But the key, obviously, is like what you guys said. It's Tua. Tua stays healthy. They can compete with anybody, I think. And as Tone said, their wide receivers can frighten any defensive back. How many places have two cornerbacks that can cover? The Jets, Philadelphia, Dallas. There's very few places that have two quality corners, especially in today's National Football League, especially when you're talking AFC because you put a lot of your money on the quarterback in the AFC compared to what you're doing in the NFC. You're not putting a ton of money in a lot of the quarterbacks in the NFC. Um, if Fangio can get that defense in the top 10, the Dolphins can make it to an AFC title game. And, of course, two things. Top 10 defense and Tua has to be healthy. If Tua's healthy, they'll sign him to a contract extension. I don't know what that'll look like. I don't know if they'll pay him 50. Maybe they pay him something like Daniel Jones. But if Tua could get 10, 11 wins, I don't know 10 wins gets you in the AFC picture when it comes to playoffs. I don't think 10 wins gets you there. I think you're going to have to win 11 games to get home. If you win 11 games, 10 games will probably get you home in the NFC. 10 wins is not going to get you home. You could be 10 and 7 in the AFC and not make the playoffs. I think you could have a bunch of teams like that. Okay. G.I. Zo goes like this. Two is a concussion away from retirement. He's also a concussion away. Or how about this, G.I. Zone? He's also a non concussion away from a contract extension. So if you want to put it in that context, you're right. But so am I. If he plays the whole season and doesn't sustain a concussion and they win 11 ball games, he'll get an extension. Two is appreciate you coming aboard. Okay. But he's got to be there. He, he's got to be there if he's going to be a factor. So, again, now where do they fit in the AFC East? Are they better than Miami? If two is healthy, are they better than the Jets? Or how about this? Are they better than the Patriots? Yes. I think they're better than the Patriots. Now, Cook and Hopkins can change that room for New England a little. Okay. If one of those players goes to New England, that could change the room for them and make that an even more competitive AFC East. But as I've said before, I think the Patriots are the worst team in the AFC East. Not a horrible team. Between seven and nine wins, I could see that happening. Okay? Are the Jets there next or are the Dolphins? I think the Jets, I think the Dolphins are the third best team in the AFC East. Okay? I do. Uh, I'm, I, I, I would say this to you. I think it's going to go like this. They're the second best team, I should say. There's four teams. Bills, Dolphins, Jets, Patriots. That's, that's who, that's where I see. What type of contract does Tua command knowing his injury history Short term, how do the Dolphins protect themselves? Um, easy. You give them a three-year contract and you use it against them in negotiations. Here's a three-year contract with two years of guaranteed money up front. And we'll put an incentive in there. If you play 14-plus games in two years, there, then there's an automatic kicker in the deal that extends you out three more years. And then you move it up to $45, $55 million. Because you've, you've, you've got to put um, a health incentive in there. You've got to. I, 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 I don't know how even Tua's people, because even if Tua went on the open market, 
Nobody's going to give Tua Tagovailoa $50 million a year in a five-year contract knowing his history of health. No one. You're not going to do that. You've got to have some protection. Or you do this. No, what? How about this? No signing bonus money. And I'll give you a four-year contract with no money that I could be on the hook with. And no one's going to do that. So you, you, me, I give him a two-year contract with a team option on what to do because the team has to have – you don't have – Tua doesn't have leverage right now unless he wins. The only leverage he has in Miami is if he wins because if he kind of limps home 9-8 and eight again, they're going to move off him because that's not going to be a good sign. That meant he missed games. He was in and out of the lineup again. And look at the helter-skelter year that the Dolphins had last year. They were too good to be 9-8. and eight. They should have been an even better football team because they were so well coached. I mean, three straight wins, three straight losses. Five straight wins, five straight losses. That's too inconsistent. That's because you can't build your team around a guy who you're not sure of. Okay? I mean, QB needy league big sales just takes one desperate general manager. Very true. Quan, very true. Very true. But a guy that could, and, and, and there's insurance policies. I don't know. But, you know, then you defer the money out. I don't know. Hey, you want to hear something? Hey, Tone, you want to hear a prediction? Guys, I think Kyler Murray's in Miami after this year. I think Arizona sends him to Miami. Okay? Because that's the kind of style of quarterback they want. They couldn't get Lamar. I think they get Kyler Murray down to Miami, and they move off of Tua. And Arizona gets an opportunity at getting one of those quarterbacks coming up again in the draft. If things go to hell in Miami and Tua's hurt, I could see Kyler Murray in Miami. There's too much talent down there. And you got all that talent down there, and Murray's not going anywhere in Arizona. What are you doing with him in Arizona? Then you got to restructure contracts of Tyree Kill and such. But, dude, I think Kyler Murray, this is his last year in Arizona. I think the Bidwells don't like the deal they gave him. Hey, anytime that you have to put a study hall clause in a guy's contract, you're not sold he's vested in the game. If I had to come, if I had to put a contract in front of you, and I wasn't sure you were going to come to work every day. You're not the guy I want to give a contract to. The least, the least things that I could count on is that you show up and punch your time clock, no? Think about that. Arizona can't even count on Kyler Murray putting his time card in. That's not something you give a guy $46.1 million to. It just doesn't make sense. Yet you gave the guy all the money, and then you put that in his contract, that he had to have like a study hall clause in it. You're not even sure he's going to punch his damn work card, get go into work every day. Not That's not a sign. Okay? You would have thought the Cardinals gave Murray a damn scholarship with all those study hall clauses. I, right. Dude, if you study here and you put four hours of studying here, you get this incentive. Dude, that is so – get this. All those incentives – that they gave Kyler Murray, there's not a chance any of those clauses are in Jalen Hurts' contract. There is not a chance. There's not a chance any of those clauses are in there when it comes to preparation and off-season conditioning and any of those things that require you to do the things that are expected. Not a chance. Not a chance. I do too, Seals. Collard doesn't look like he's like in Arizona. Yeah, because the organization... By the way, I'm not giving Arizona a pass. It's a shitty organization. All right. 